what is going on guys welcome back to another swift video in today's video we're going to learn how to add an animated spinner button to your app so here we have two buttons and this first one here you'll notice when i tap it it turns into this really cool uh spinner and then when it uh you know is done we hard coded it to two seconds it expands and it actually shakes there implying that something went wrong uh, and the other button here, when we tap on this, it also spins, but when it's done, you'll see that it transitions with this really cool transition to a different controller. So these buttons are really cool for login forms or, you know, honestly, a bunch of places in your app. So we'll take a look at how to bring it into your app. So if you're into that, if you're excited, make sure you start by hitting the like button, hit subscribe for daily Swift and iOS related videos, get Xcode ready, get pumped. Let's talk about some animated buttons in your app. Quick pause before the video. This video is brought to you by iosacademy.io. Head on over to check out the newly launched TikTok and Swift UI courses. Learn to build world-class professional apps in a fraction of the time, quickly and efficiently. That said, let's get back to the video. All right, we're gonna begin by opening up Xcode and creating a new project. We're gonna stick with the app template under iOS and I'm gonna go ahead and call this uh, animated spinner button, just like that. Make sure your language of choice is Swift down here and your lifecycle is UI kit. Go ahead and continue and save the project wherever you'd like. We'll toss it onto the desktop. And the first thing we're gonna do is A, expand our Xcode window Close the right panel here. We're gonna hit the run button to get our project building and booting up into our simulator. And we are gonna jump into our view controller where we will write the majority of our code. So cool, it looks like our project has successfully built and there is our blank app. So before we write any code, we wanna bring in the CocoaPod that allows us to create this transition button fairly simply. So I'm gonna hit pause at the top left here and close Xcode out. We are going to open up the terminal application and we're gonna CD into our project, which we uh, put onto our desktop. I believe I called it uh, animated spinner. So we'll CD into animated spinner. And for those of you who know what Cocoa Pods are, go ahead and run pod in it. If you don't know what Cocoa Pods are, I've got a separate video on it. But once you've initialized Cocoa Pods, you can go ahead and open up the pod file that it should have created for you. And in here, we're gonna add a single Cocoa Pod and it is going to be a transition button, except make sure you spell it correctly, unlike what I just did there. And make sure you lowercase your P here, otherwise you're gonna run into some errors. And once you've got that added, go ahead and hit Command S to save and close it out. And then you can come back to terminal and run pod install and it'll go ahead and install that uh, dependency for you, and this should be fairly quick. Now, once you've done that, you can open up the project name.xe workspace, which should have been generated for you. Uh, for those of you, once again, who know how CocoaPods work, this includes your dependencies. So let's open up the project here, and I'm just gonna hit the run button one more time, which will compile our project plus that CocoaPod that we just brought in. Uh, it takes a few more seconds the first time you compile it since there's more code to be compiled, but we should see it run here in a moment in our simulator, just like that. So pretty straightforward stuff so far. And now we can start writing our code. So let me bump up the font size so you all can see this nice and large. And the first thing we want to do is import that framework we bought in, brought in, which is called transition uh, button. Pretty simple. The next thing we want to go ahead and do is create the button. So it is... Uh, you know, a transition button. So I'm gonna create a, a transition uh, button here. And we can create it with a frame, which is pretty straightforward uh, and a primary action. I'm just gonna use a frame. We're gonna do CD rect zero, zero, we'll say 250 by 50. And in view to load, we're just gonna configure the button a little more. We're gonna say add sub view uh, button like that, and let me just do some configuration so it looks a little nicer here. We're gonna say button. Its background color is going to be a system pink color. We're also gonna give it a title. We're gonna say set title, and let's give it a title of continue for a state of normal. 
I am also going to, let's see, give it a nice corner radius so it's nice and rounded. We'll say 12. And of course, we want to connect it to a uh, action that gets called when we tap on it. So we'll add a target with a selector of did tap button, just like that, for an event of touch up inside. And we need to go ahead and uh, declare this selector down below. And let's see, we also want this button to be centered. So I'm gonna say button.center is view.center. And finally, one additional thing we wanna do is when we go ahead and get the button to animate, uh, we wanna also set a color uh, of the spinner. And let's get rid of my antivirus pop-up that loves to make appearances. So we're gonna set the spinner color to be, let's say white. Of course, you can control this and make it look however you want. So once we tap on this um, did tap button, what we want to go ahead and do is we're going to say button uh, and we're going to say start animation. And that's it. That's how you start the animation. We'll take a look at how to collapse, rather expand the button again. Let's go ahead and hit command R to build and run. We have a pretty nice looking button here. We tap on it and uh, we get the animation going. So this type of button, I personally really, really like it. Um, it's really good for if you have login screens or you know, any button that you tap and you have some kind of API call or some asynchronous task running where the user has to wait, instead of showing, um, you know, a button or a spinner in the middle of the screen, I like this button, um, you know, like this. So what we can now do in this function now is uh, after a particular amount of time, we're going to say dispatch to main uh, async after now plus let's say like four seconds we are going to stop the spinning and we are also going to um, transition to another view controller with a cool transition. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna say self.button and I believe it is stop animation. And we can actually pass in an animation style as well as a uh, revert after delay and completion. But let's see, what's this last one here? So this one here also takes in a uh, you can stop the animation with a custom animation if you'd like, but we are going to say stop animation like that. The animation style, there are three to pick from. There's shake, expand, and normal. Let's just do expand. Let's see, revert after uh, delay. Let's go ahead and pass in an interval of, let's say, one second there. And a completion will leave empty for the time being. We'll take a look at that custom transition in a moment, but let's just see that revert in action. So we'll tap this after four seconds, something should happen. And that something should be, um, it stops animating and it does that cool animation right there. And that's the animation that we're gonna actually use to transition to the other screen. But let's take a look at uh, another animation. So if you just wanted to uh, you know, expand the button again, I believe it's normal. Um, after four seconds, what you'll see here uh, is that it'll just expand back to the original button. Um, I believe that you can use that for, let's say you want to, you know, something went wrong and you want to show the user an alert or something, um, or some error. And the third one here is shake. Let's take a look at that one real quick before we look at that custom transition. We're going to go ahead and tap on this and after a few seconds, uh, you'll see here that it will actually expand and then it also shakes the button. Uh, implying that something went wrong. So let's go back and change this to expand. And what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to create a second view controller. I guess I can just do it in this file here. And we're going to say this is second view controller. And we want it to inherit from a custom transition view controller, I believe. Let's see, transition view controller, this one right here. And this controller is a part of the framework we brought in. And the reason we want this instead of a UI view controller is because in here, when we go ahead and say, um, we go ahead and try to create the new view controller, which is our second view controller right here, which autocomplete is not autocompleting. So I'm gonna copy and paste it. We're gonna say self.present. And we want it to fade to the new controller so it looks really like clean and um, pretty nice. So let me go ahead and uh, override view did uh, load here. Call super view did load. And I'm just going to set the background color of the view in here to be the system background. So white or black, depending on, you know, if you're in light mode or dark mode. 
go ahead and give this a run and let's see what this transition looks like now. Um, I'm a huge fan of it and it looks really clean. So after four seconds, you're gonna see that it actually transitions to this other screen here. Um, let me actually make the background different so you can see it a little better. Let's try, let's try blue. And let's give it a few seconds. Let's go ahead and tap on it. And then it should expand and then transition to that other controller. So just like that, it transitions. It's a little fast. So one other thing you could do is uh, you could delay this as well. If you want the animation to appear to be a little longer, you can say async after, let's say now plus two seconds. And you can paste that stuff in there. Um, at this point, it's a little subjective of how you want your app to kind of look and feel. Um, there's no really right or wrong way. It's literally kind of what you want. So it'll do that. And then after two seconds, uh, it expands and does that, which I guess is a little slower than what we probably want. So let's try 0 0.5. Give it a few seconds. And let's see, let's go ahead and hit the button, give it four seconds. And then it's gonna expand, take over the whole screen like that. And then it'll show you your other screen. I'm actually not a fan of it too, too much when it kind of just has really jarring color changes. Um, ideally your colors are kind of somewhat connected, uh, but I do like that this button is super simple to use. Of course you can build this out from scratch too, but it's basically exactly what this framework gives you. So it's kind of redundant. Um, so I just opt to bring in the framework and that's it. That's how you bring in um, this pretty slick looking button. So we're going to change this uh, back. I'm going to get rid of this business here and I'm going to change this back to be a uh, shake here. Um, and that's it. That's all that we've got. We can go ahead and configure the button like a normal button like I've done up here. Um, you know, you can use multiple of these buttons. Just be careful of not using them too many times over and over because sometimes the animation can be a little much in your, uh, in your app. Your viewer and users might get a little annoyed. Uh, but that's it. That's all I've got for you guys. If you haven't destroyed the like button already, make sure to do so. It helps out with the YouTube algorithm. If you enjoy the video and like iOS, like making apps, make sure to also hit subscribe and the bell icon to stay up to date with our daily iOS and Swift uploads. And of course, if you've got any comments, don't hesitate to leave them down below. Video suggestions, feedback, bugs. Love hearing from you guys. Love replying. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you on the next video.